Along the coasts and rivers in Asia, tens of millions of people in cities and villages are vulnerable to storms, floods, droughts, and rising sea levels. Wetland ecosystems in these landscapes reduce the impact of these threats and help secure clean water supply, strengthen food security, and contribute to local incomes. But today, these wetlands face severe pressures. For centuries, water infrastructure such as dikes have been constructed to serve a single solution, often at the expense of nature. Across the continent, coastlines are subsiding and eroding. Rivers have been canalized. Peatlands have been drained. Erasing and ignoring natural systems have contributed to biodiversity collapse and the loss of livelihoods. These actions make people more vulnerable to extreme weather events, which will worsen under a changing climate. Fortunately, our understanding of coastal and riverine systems have improved. And we are learning how to build with nature rather than against it. Local stakeholders joining hands with ecologists and engineers represent the future of water engineering. Building with nature is a philosophy. It is a design and it is an implementation approach that integrates nature-based solutions into water infrastructure, combining ecosystem restoration with engineering strategies. A wide range of design concepts has been piloted over the past 12 years in the Netherlands and Indonesia, considering the natural systems as well as surrounding social and institutional contexts. Building with nature projects are dynamic, multifunctional, innovative, and context specific. These aspects must be considered carefully in project development. By working together on Building with Nature Asia in multiple countries, we can enable joint learning and overcome existing barriers to widespread uptake of the approach. I want to apply Building with Nature, a nature-based solution to address flooding and drought widely and confidently in the Philippines. These impacts will be exacerbated with climate change. Our ecosystems, from the reaches of our mountains to the coastlines of our islands, are disturbed and the ecosystem services that they provide have diminished. We need to adapt to climate change impacts by building with nature and capturing carbon by conserving our forests, river basins, coastlines, and intertidal wetlands. Thank you. For almost an entire generation, uh, the main solution to resolving our floods uh, has been to um, elevate our local concrete roads. In, in the past 20 years, most of our roads have been elevated almost three times uh, in some portions. However, uh, flood levels continue to flow over the most recently elevated portions of these roads. This only illustrates that uh, this kind of hard infrastructure uh, solutions alone uh, and, uh, are, are short term and um, in the end expensive. Uh, wh what we need are, is new knowledge uh, to show us new ways of how to uh, live and work under the new conditions of the coastal environment and be able to resolve our water-related concerns in the long term. We need uh, nature-based solutions, technologies and designs that uh, apply and make use of natural and traditional materials in new ways. We have heard of the experience of Indamak, Indonesia, so we would very much like to uh, understand uh, what are the lessons learned from Demak um, uh, related to similar uh, uh, challenges, uh, coastal subsidence and flooding, uh, which we could uh, apply as we uh, hope to restore our coastline and our mangrove forests. 
together with hundreds of stakeholders and experts, Wetlands International, the Ministry of Marine Affairs and Fisheries of the Republic of Indonesia, EcoShape, and One Architecture and Urbanism are pioneering the Building with Nature Asia initiative. Convened by Indonesia, India, Malaysia, the Philippines, and China, our mission is to facilitate large-scale adoption of the Building with Nature approach, which seeks to transform water engineering to achieve multi-benefit solutions that work with nature. This initiative will benefit the tens of millions of people who live in vulnerable coastal zones, around lakes and river deltas. It will enhance biodiversity, water and food security, carbon storage and sustainable development. Now, when I was introduced to the Building with Nature concept, I found it a very welcome approach for Malaysia. Basically because we have begun to realise the negative impacts of purely engineering or structural approach to solve natural disasters. We started realising this when uh, we saw the loss of our river ecosystem as a result of channelizing our rivers and straightening them uh, under the design philosophy of direct disposal. Now we have reversed our thinking and we think that it is best to leave the meanders in the river and protect the banks with greens or with vegetation so as the ecosystem can survive. So this is essentially a U-turn in our philosophy and it is exactly in line with what Building with Nature is trying to achieve. Another area where we found that building with nature is in line with what our aspirations are, is in coastal protection. In the past, we have built a lot of revetments out of rocks and out of concrete units, and it has resulted in the loss of the beach. Over time, we have started to understand how mangroves and structural units uh, interact. And uh, I was then uh, introduced to programs done by uh, our neighboring countries, such as Indonesia, in terms of or building offshore uh, or nearshore breakwaters to uh, encourage the growth of mangroves. We find that we can emulate this and uh, learn from our Indonesian neighbors. So this uh, initiative, uh, the project towards accelerating adaptation through building with nature in Asia is a welcome move for us. Uh, we can apply this uh, approach in our coastal zones, in our river basins and urban areas mainly to uh, demonstrate the uh, practicality, the utility and also provide a realistic study for the cost and benefit of approach of the building with nature versus the usual expensive hard engineering uh, construction. So we hope that with this approach we will gather more adoption particularly with the pilot sites and of course once they uh, experience also uh, socio-economic benefits. The lessons learned in this demonstration uh, approaches or uh, activities will help us design or improve our policies and also the uh, system of local governance. It will also provide us an opportunity to gather data uh, on the time needed and the investment required for the uh, alternative approach that we will be pushing instead of the usual hard engineering approach. Of course, collaboration with Asian countries would be very beneficial to the Philippines. We can learn from the experiences of other countries, for example, Indonesia, uh, in, in addressing the, the subsidence and eroding coastline in the in the map. Uh, of course, we can also share our experiences here in the Philippines with them. The Ministry of Building Affairs and Fisheries, in collaboration with the Ministry of Public Work and Public Housing, the District of Government of Denmark, and supported by the Indonesian Dutch consortiums, has become a pioneer in implementing the Building with Nature approach to increase the resilience of the northern coast of Java, especially in the Mark region. We see that this collaboration has shown promising results in providing integrated solution for handling water infrastructure. The approach we have implemented has received attention from academicians, practitioners, and the government, 
both Indonesia and abroad, such as from Asia, Africa, and Europe region. For this reason, Indonesia is keen to share its experience with the other countries in applying building with nature as a capacity building process. How will we organize Building with Nature Asia? We will leverage our multidisciplinary consortia to support the development of large-scale Building with Nature demonstration projects in the convening countries. These projects aim to inspire bottom-up action. Together with national and local actors and experts, landscape propositions have been formulated for pilot projects in five countries. For each site, economic, social, and ecological risks and stresses have been assessed, and applicable building with nature concepts have been identified, leading to high-level project definitions. In each landscape proposition, critical stakeholders as well as ecological, economic, and social co-benefits are mapped, integrated, and visualized. In each country, we will work towards broader adoption of building with nature through in-country replication. This is complemented by a building with nature platform as the engine of the initiative to address barriers to replication and upscaling at regional and national levels. Programs include capacity building, awareness raising, institutional embedding, knowledge development and exchange, and the mobilization of resources. Nature-based solutions have attracted huge interest over recent years, but academic and implementation capacity is still lagging behind. We urgently need to develop training curricula to train people in the key concepts behind nature-based solutions, and importantly, to start mainstreaming those principles into broader engineering philosophies. Now, training in nature-based solutions must be multidisciplinary. It's not the purview of just geographers, just engineers, or just coastal geomorphologists. It needs skills from all of those disciplines and more, including the social sciences. Only then are we going to be able to start implementing nature-based solutions at the scales that we need to to make change. So we're at a real tipping point now. You know, we have the interest from stakeholders, but we need to match it with the capacity and the skills to move nature-based solutions away from just the pilot project phase and towards their mainstreaming as a default solution to engineering and defense against climate change. The Netherlands has a long tradition of managing risks and uncertainties. This has made us creative and nowadays we manage these risks and uncertainties with an approach that includes all levels of government and all aspects of water management. We used to fight flooding with dikes and other infrastructural work and learned that for instance the consequences for the biodiversity can be devastating. Therefore, more and more policies have become nature-based solutions aimed at living with water. Take for example the Building with Nature product in Dimak, Indonesia. Recently this project has received the prestigious Flood and Coast Excellence Award from the Environmental Agency in the UK. This is a big recognition to support upscaling to other countries in Asia. I strongly believe in Building with Nature as a critical part of addressing water challenges and to promote and support this community-based approach, we all have to explore ways to combine different initiatives where and whenever possible. The Netherlands recognizes the importance of joining forces, for instance, in using the water action track and water as a leverage as complementing parts in locally based strategies to create the necessary conditions. This enables us to advocate innovative governance sound businesses and finance models, and last but not least, inclusive collaboration with various sectors and stakeholders. Only together we can make communities more resilient. What can we say about the return on investment when it comes to nature-based solutions? There's a general understanding and thinking that nature-based solutions are more expensive than traditional solutions. Actually, they are not. 
biodiversity, flood protection, construction material. When we all put them together, the return of investment is one to three to ten times higher, dependently on the context in which they're built. Nature-based solutions such as the building with nature approach that contribute to biodiversity conservation as well as to the adaptation to the unavoidable effects of climate change can be as shown by you, cost-effective means to promote resilience. And in line with the commitment of Indonesia's Ministry of Marine Affairs and Fisheries to mainstream and upscale building with nature in the region, we are extremely happy to support, again via ICI, the planned follow-up project of building with nature in Indonesia accelerating adaption in Asia, partnering up with Indonesia, the Philippines, Malaysia, India, and China. ADB and I believe the Building with Nature Asia program, or NBS solutions for water-related infrastructure and other water security needs, provides a sustainable and flexible approach in the face of climate change. The MBS approach is increasingly demanded by ADB clients across Asia and the Pacific, yet its application is still not widely mainstreamed. This is mainly because of the lack of knowledge about the project design, which is technically feasible and economically viable, yet the body of evidence and business case is lacking, and this can be supported by partnering with the uh, Wetlands International and Building with Nature program. The concept of NBS has been widely applied in ADB projects uh, in both our sovereign PPP and private sector operation, but we need to do more. To upscale nature-based solutions and promote building with nature approach, ADB and other development partners must collaborate by sharing knowledge and resources and by making collective efforts. We look very much to working closely with you. Join us and support us. This initiative is being developed by representatives from government agencies, universities, NGOs, development banks, and the private sector. And this is just the start. We would like to invite partners and donors to join us and together help to shape this initiative.